you know what they're doing tonight? Okay. Here is girls allowed with Three, all two, one. It's a great sound, they're good looking, probably hit huge. Oh, it's too much. <laughs> that was just brilliant. That was so cool. I'm probably not going to sleep for another two days now. Now, yes. If I was straight. <laughs> With the hardcore fans taken care of, it's on to the next round of promotion for our busy popsters. We're live this Friday afternoon and joined by some of the most stunning women in the entire world. Oh. Please make them welcome. It's Girls Aloud. And then joining us in the Cubby House this afternoon, five beautiful girls, five very loud girls. They are Girls Aloud. Well, that's our real time fun. We thought we could go in there and we're going to do it. With TV and radio under their belts, Hillary's hectic schedule continues and the girls dash off to the zoo for some photo opportunities. I, I just like animals and cages. It's not really bad. It's not really anti-animal. Like, I just think that it's so unpredictable. It's clinging on, you know, like, it's more a clung. Oh, my God. What will I do if I kiss it? Bite me face up. Look at her. She is... When we come in here, guys, she's like it. Would I like it? No. Okay, yeah. We'll be sitting Ooh, on this teddy at the moment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Aren't you close to that? <laughs> Can we just get a proposed group shot for yeah. this photographer here, right? For Girlfriend Magazine. Oh, beautiful. There are no bigger Girls Allowed fans than Emily and Lang. These two Australian superfans discovered them three years ago and have been devoted ever since. I'm Emily. Hi, I'm Lang. And we've loved Girls Aloud for about three years now, I yeah. think it's been. Yes. We're completely obsessed with them. We love them all. Kimberly's my favourite. Nadine's my favourite. However, we do love them all. I think everybody deep down is a huge Girls Aloud <laughs> fan. <laughs> As a reward for their Girls Aloud commitment, our Aussie super fans have been granted an audience with their idols at Sydney Zoo. I can't believe we're going to see them! <laughs> Yeah. Emily and Lang finally meet the objects of their obsession, and our super fans are a bit shell shocked. <laughs> good. Uh, I keep hanging my chest like you're my. I just saw my hand shaking. In. So that <laughs> it's just surreal. It's the only word there is to explain it. Like these aren't real people. They're people in our TVs that yeah. dance around. <laughs> but they are real. <laughs> Bye, Nadine. Bye, Sarah. Thanks for coming. That's <laughs> they say goodbye to us, and they're so beautiful. <laughs> I just kept kissing them. <laughs> <laughs> Back at the hotel and even a spot of sunbathing isn't wasted as the girls do yet more interviews. We're doing um, phoners for um, radio stations and stuff and interviews. Oh, I've always been at stage school and doing shows and musicals and then as I got older. Oh God, why do you keep giving us these hard questions? But not all the calls are from the press. Who's this? Nadine's been keeping a budding holiday romance secret and she doesn't want this call to be filmed. I'm good, I'm just something. Nadine's famous admirer is from the hit show Desperate Housewives, sexy gardener Jesse Metcalf. Nadine met Jesse in secret in her hotel and now the US star has asked her out for a drink. I've fancied him for ages and he's a babe. Keeping your love life under wraps is difficult for any member of Girls Allowed, particularly when it's with a Hollywood actor. Every interview that I've done, people were like, are you, um, are you seeing Jesse Metcalf? Are you seeing Jesse Metcalf? And I'm just thinking, oh, God, no. Because I'm not the type of person that wants to go around and talk about things and say, oh, I'm doing this, or, you know, look, we were here, or we were there. Or... While Nadine goes off on a hot date, the rest of the girls decide to really let their hair down on their last night. This is the first night we've actually been out on the town in Sydney since we've been on top. Aren't you proud of this? Shares us back on the coffee. Not like my Saturday night at home, I tell you. Most cameras and drink is not a good combination. Here goes. But Cheryl's learned her lesson from last time, and Hillary takes her back to the hotel to get an early night. I'm too
A few tequilas later and the others show no sign of slowing down. It's 2 a.m. and the others are ready to turn in. But Sarah's determined to go it alone. Where's Nicola? The next morning, and Sarah relaxes by the pool, knowing there's no incriminating pap shots from last night. I like the fact we don't get the stairs wherever we go, like here. But, you know, in England, I suppose it yeah, we are more, more well known and it's nice to get recognition for what you've done because you've worked so hard for it. But then there are times where you do wish that you could just be invisible. The night out was a bit of a mad one, but I think it was worth it. We all had a really good time and, you know, we did go a little bit wild, but we were in a new country where nobody knew who we were, so we could get away with murder. The trip has been a success and the girls discover they've hit the Aussie pop charts. It's really good that it's gone in at 26, like, the best it could possibly have done. And Nadine's hit the jackpot. I don't know if there's a romance with Jessie and Nadine. I just uh, know they met up and had a really nice evening. And I do know that she's got a lovely bouquet of flowers. More than that, my lips are sealed. Next week, Sarah crashes and burns. Nice and steady till you're on the circuit. Nadine shops for saucy underwear. Do you have just plain white underwear? No, no, you don't do that. <laughs> no. It's more adventurous than that. Yeah. And someone pays a surprise visit. Cupid's got blonde extensions. Somebody's in for a Chantel inspired makeover. Well, he fixes them up on their dream date tomorrow at 10. Thanks tonight, Destination Lost. Catch up with the survivors on E4.